Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here the official guide to the GRE, the revised journal test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. You're going to need it in order for you to be able to follow my work. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 220. Let's take a look at it. Page 220. Problem number 15. Problem number. Problem number. This is problem number 15 on page 220. And today is our lesson number 95. Before we actually do problem number 15, which goes something like this, I'm going to read it to you. Make sure that you have the book in front of you. It goes something like this. It says, when a positive integer n is divided by 3, or oh, this is something else, uh, the remainder is 2, uh, so on and so forth. Before we actually do that problem, number 15, I have something else for you on the blackboard. Let's take care of this problem first and understand the concept. And afterwards, we'll come to this pro uh, the problem that, that, is, uh, that is given in the book. Okay? Again. One more time before we actually do this problem. This is not 15. This is not 15. This is something else. And before we actually do this problem, let's do one more problem. A simplest one first. We'll do the simplest one first. Then we'll do something a little bit more complicated. And then we'll tackle the one that you see in the book. Okay? So here's the, here's the problem. Here's, here's what I'm asking you. It says, it says, give me a number. Give me a number which when divided by, let's say, when divided by 5 yields a remainder of 3. Can you think of a number which when divided by 5 gives us a remainder of 3? How about 15? 15 divided by 5 gives us 3, doesn't it? It does give us 3, doesn't it? Well, sometimes I run into problems like this when I'm dealing, uh, dealing with clients. Not because they don't understand the concept, obviously, but because it's been many, many moons since we learned these concepts. In some cases, as many as 20 years. When uh, last time when they saw the, these concepts as a schoolboy and schoolgirl, so people forget. This is not, this is not a remainder. Remainder. Let me just, just give me a second here. I'm looking for a word quotient. I do not know how to spell the bloody thing, so I have to look it up. Quotient. I don't want to misspell on the blackboard. Voila, voila, quotient, Q U O T I E N T, quotient. Remainder is so called because it is what remains at the end. What remains at the end here is a big fat zero. And that is your remainder here. This is the remainder. This is not a remainder. This is the result that you get. The result that you get. As, as, uh, when you do a division, when you divide one number by the other number, the result that we obtain is called a quotient. Make sure you do not confuse the concept of quotient with the remainder. So can, we think, can you think of another number which, when divided by 3, gives us a remainder of... Which, which, when divided by 5, gives us a remainder of 3? Well, I know that we can divide 20 into 5 very easily. 5 fours are 20. 20 will divide even into 5. So if we had 3 more than that, instead of 20, if we start out with 3 more than that, 23. And if you were to divide that by 5, 5 fours are 20, and that will give us a remainder of 3, voila. That does give us a remainder of 3, it does give us a remainder of 0. We're looking for a remainder of 3, this is no good, this, this won't do the job. So 23 would be one of the numbers. So here, here it says, give me a number. Which number? Any old number. There are infinite possible answers here. They are simply asking you to give you to, to give them a number, which when you divide by five will give us will yield us a remainder of three, and we just did that. Twenty-three would do the job. Can you think of any other number that which when divided by five will give us a remainder of three? How about a fifty-three? Fifty-three divided by five, fifty-three goes ten times and will give us a remainder of three. You see, remainder of three. Can you give me the smallest number? Give me a number, not a number, but now I'm changing the problem. Uh, it says, give me, 
the smallest the smallest positive positive integer positive integer okay so now the question reads like this it's, I'm going to read it to you, it's getting quite messy so I'm going to read it to you it says give me the smallest I added these two words here, uh, these three words here the article and, the, and, the, and these two words smallest positive right here it says give me the smallest positive integer which when divided by 5 yields a remainder of 3 can you think of a smallest one well the reason I'm asking this question is because when in the exam when you come across a problem like this you want to plug in a number for n you want to plug in a number for n uh, so that you don't have to do this in an algebraic way you can solve it as an arithmetic problem now in order for you to be able to plug in a number for n here that works it makes the job much easier and quicker if you can very quickly think of the smallest possible number that will do the job here that's what we're learning here so can you think of a smallest number which when divided by 5 gives us a remainder of 3 that is very easy very simple this is how we do it I'm going to erase everything here because I need the room it's getting very crowded let's erase everything and listen okay listen we know we know that we can divide 5 into 5 very easily obviously 5 goes into 5 one time we want a remainder of 3 therefore the smallest number that will do the job is just 3 more than that voila 8 8 divided by 3 will give us a remainder of sorry 8 divided by 5 rather 8 divided by 8 5 plus 3 is 8 divided by 5 will give us a remainder of 3 let's do one more it says give me the smallest positive I'm gonna rewrite it because it's, it's just too crowded to, uh, to, to, to too much here I'm gonna rewrite the whole thing give me the give me the smallest positive integer which when divided by something will yield a, a remainder of something let's do a few of them we're going to do a few of them very quickly you and I together we're going to do a few problems okay so I'm going to write down the problem in, in red, uh, red ink here and then we'll solve it here how about give me a number which when divided by 7 yields a remainder of 4 well that's very easy that's 11 you see 7 7 divided by 7 of course has a remainder of 0 because 7 goes even into 7 we want a remainder of 4 so what better way than to simply just add 4 to it now of course there are any multiple of 7 any multiple of for example 7 times 3 plus a 4 when you divide by 7 will also re yield a remainder of 4 7 times 3 is 24 20, uh, 7 times 3 is 21 plus a 4 is 25 so if you were to divide 25 by 7 if we were to divide 25 by 7 we'll go 3 times 21 and will give us a remainder of 4 but 25 is not the smallest number the smallest number that you can think of is simply 7 plus 4 that's it 7 plus 4 divided by 7 will yield us a remainder of 4 why because 7 goes even into 7 we want a remainder of 4 so just add 7, 4 to it that's all let's do one more how about give me a number which when divided by 5 yields a gives us a remainder of 3 well that's very easy that's 8 8 5 plus 3 divided by 5 which is 8 if you were to divide 8 by 5 we give us a remainder of 3 let's do one more I'm going to do one more and then we've gone after that and that's it a little bit more complicated how about give me a number which when divided by 17 gives us a remainder of 12 can you think of a smallest possible number that will do the job a smallest possible number which that's what it's asking it says give me the smallest positive integer it has to be a whole number it has to be positive the smallest positive integer that you can think of which when you divide by 17 yields a remainder of 12 but that's very easy that's 17 plus 12 
17 plus 12. If you were to divide this number by 17, you will have a remainder of 12. Why? Because we are forcing it to be like that. But we know 17 goes, easy, uh, 17 goes even into 17. By adding another 12, will give us a remainder of 12. Do you understand? Because that's what's going to be left over. How about a number which, when divided by, uh, this is the last one I promise you, which, when divided by 33, gives us a remainder of 7. But that will be 40. 40 divided by 7 will give us a remainder of 7. 43 divided by 33, sorry, I'm, I'm 40, that's the problem when you try to save 2 seconds, it takes, ends up taking longer. 40 divided by 7, we learn a lesson out of it. When you're solving a math problem, there are smart way of saving 2 seconds and there are not so smart way of saving 2 seconds. And sometimes when you end up trying to save 2 seconds in a not so smart way, it ends up costing you more. I just did that. So here we go. 33 plus 7 is 40. 40 divided by 7. 40 divided by 7. See, I'm not, I'm not paying attention. We're not dividing it by 7. We are dividing it by 33. 40, 40 divided by 33 will give us a remainder of 7. If you were to do that, you will get 1 and 7 33rds. 1 and 7 33rds. Or if you like, you can also write that as 1 and remainder 7. Some people write it like this. A remainder 7 since we are dividing it by 33 is 7 33. Now let's do the problem, this problem here. So here the answer was 33 plus 7 over 33 will give us, will give us remainder of 7. Let's do this one. It says, give me a positive integer n, give me a positive integer n, so that when you divide it by 9, we have a remainder of 7. Oh, sorry, let me read it again one more time. It says, when a positive integer n, we are told that, we're not, we, we're not being asked anything here, I just read it, even though I wrote that bloody thing myself. It says, when a positive integer n is divided by 9, the remainder is 7. We are told that. So what we're going to do now is to think of a number that we can plug in here that will satisfy this condition. So that when it divided by 9, we have a remainder of 7. And we're going to plug in that value for n. Once we plug in a nice value for n, there are infinite possible number of values that you can plug in for n that will do the job here. Any multiple of 9 plus a 7, when divided by 9, will give us a remainder of 7. For example, you see here, 18 plus 7 divided by 9. We know 18 can be divided by 9 twice. And if you were to divide 18 plus 7 divided by 9, 18 plus 7 is 25. 25 divided by 9 goes 2 times 18, and that gives us a remainder of 7. Similarly, 90 plus 7 divided by 9 will yield a remainder of 7. 90 divided by 9, sorry, 97 rather. 97 divided by 9 will give us a remainder of 7. Any multiple of 9 plus a 7 when divided by 9 will give us a remainder of 7. We know we know we can divide we know we can divide 81 by 9. So if you were to add 7 to it, that will give us a remainder of 7 when you divide by 9. Can you think of a smallest number? Because that's what you want to plug in. In the exam, you don't want to plug in some weird huge number because it just creates more work. The smallest number that we can think of for n is simply 9 plus 7. 9 plus 7 is 16. When you divide 16 by 9, it gives us a remainder of 7. You see? We're looking for a remainder of 7. This gives us a remainder of 7. So now we have value for n. n is 16. 16 does the job. 16 is the smallest number that will, the smallest positive number that is, the smallest positive integer that does the job. Now we can use the same value of n. Now we can use the same value of n and answer the question that is being asked. The question that is being asked is, the question that, that is being asked is, what is the remainder? What is the remainder when n plus 5 is divided by 9? Well, let's find out. 
our, our n is this. Our n is 9 plus 7, which is 16. So our n, our n is 9 plus 7, which is 16, plus a 5. So this is this quantity right here. 16 plus 5 is 21. 21 divided by 9, if you were to do that, it goes 2 times 18, and that will give us the remainder of 3. Voila. So the answer to this question is 3. Answer to this question is 3. Let me read the question one more time. Let me read the question one more time. The question is, the question was, when a positive integer n, when a positive integer n is divided by 9, the remainder is 7. We are told that. We are told that we have some number which, when you divide by 9, gives us a remainder of 7. The question is, what will be the remainder if you were to take the quantity and add 5 to it and divide that quantity by 9? And we found out that the answer is 3. Now, do you know why? Why is the answer 3? Let me explain to you. Okay, listen very carefully. I'm going to give you a logical cogent explanation as to why the answer turned out to be 3. And if you do not know what cogent means, we'll worry about that in a second. Okay, let's leave it in abeyance. Look, before, before, In the beginning, we know that we have some quantity n, any old quantity n, and we are told that when you divide the quantity by 9, the remainder is 7. Well, if the remainder is 7 before, and we are adding 5 to it, listen very carefully, before the remainder was 7, and if you are adding 5 to that quantity, now we have 12. Well, if we can't have a remainder of 12. When you divide a number by 9, when you divide a number by 9, you cannot have a remainder of 12. Let me show you why. 21 divided by 9, it will be silly for us to go like this. It will be silly for us to go like this. You cannot have a remainder of, you can't say the remainder is going to be 12 because before the remainder was 7 and we are adding 5 to it, we are adding 5 to n, therefore we cannot just sit there and say, well, before the remainder was 7, we are adding 5 to it, therefore the remainder should be 12. Remainder cannot be, remainder cannot be more than the number that we are dividing, dividing by. Why? Because this is 12, we could go one more round. We could go one more round. It should be one more round of 9 with a remainder of 3, which is what we show here. Of course, we don't do division like this. There will be silly ways to divide. But because this is 12, which is more than 9, we could have gone one more round. And if we were to go one more round, we will take away 9 from the 12. And if we take away 9 from the 12, we should have a remainder of 3. Well, that's all. That's all. Enough of that. Let's do the problem that is in the book here so that uh, we, can, we can move on with our lives. I need the room, so I need to erase. I need to erase a lot of things. What should I erase? Let's erase this part right here. Oh, cogent means to be persuasive. To provide a cogent explanation means to provide a persuasive, convincing explanation. Cogent was the word. Let's see when did we learn it in our vocabulary lessons. I know, I know we did, I know we did cogent, because I use that word all the time. Day number seven. Day number seven. The noun of cogent, well, you, if you're interested, you can learn it. You watch the video, just type in Keshwani, vocabulary, day seven. Vocabulary, day seven, and my name, it will pop right up and learn it. You will learn that word along with some other useful words. Also, we learned the word abeyance. I said just leave it in abeyance. Uh, the, co the word cogent that was. Let's keep, leave the, co the word cogent aside for the time being so that we can continue with our problem. That's what abeyance means, to so leave it aside. We'll deal with it later. When did we learn the word abeyance? I know we learned that word too. So that is also a word that crops up many a times. Every time I want to put something aside, we say let's leave it in abeyance. Let's keep it in the bands. Day number nine. Let's, let's do the problem that is on hand. It says when a positive integer n is divided by three. Actually, let's do it here. Let's do it here. I'm going to raise all of this thing. When a positive integer n is divided by three, divided by three, the remainder is two. The remainder is two. 
that's the first line. When a positive integer n is divided by 3, the remainder is 2. When, when n is divided by 5, the remainder is 1. When n is divided by 5, when n is divided by 5, the remainder is 1. So that was the first line, this is the second line. The question simply is, what is the, what is the least possible value of n? You see, what is the least possible value of n, which is what we did in the very beginning of the, of the, of the clip uh, of the video, where we were not looking for just any old number that will do the job but I ask you to give me the smallest positive integer. That's what the same thing is here. Except here, they're combining two, 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 two problems together. So let's do it together, shall we? Let's do it here. I need the room. That's enough of this thing. Well, the first part is very straightforward, very simple. Very straightforward, very simple. What's the smallest number that you can think of, which, when divided by three, which, when divided by three, gives us a remainder of two? Well, that'll be five. 5 will do the job because 3 plus 2 is 5. 3 plus 2 is 5. If you were to, if you, we know we can divide 3 into 3. So if you were to add 2 to it, 3 plus 2 divided by 3 will give us the remainder of 2. 3 plus 2, 3 plus 2 divided by 3 gives us the remainder of 2. So that does the job. The problem is that here we get a 5 divided by 3. Problem is that when we plug in 5 here, when we plug in 5 here, 5, 5 divided by 5 does not give us a remainder of 1. 5 divided by 5 gives us a remainder of 0. So that is not the answer. We need to go next round. So what can we think of after 5 that will do the top part, that will take care of the top part? This 5 does not do the job. It, 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 it doesn't work. This 5 does not work. We need, to, we need something. We need to go one more round. Well, I shouldn't say we need to go one more round. We need to go at least one more round. We'll see what happens. So what's the next number that we can think of? Well, let's add three more to it. Let's add three more to it. So now we have, so now we have, when a positive integer, when a positive integer, not five, we got five from three plus two. We got five by adding, taking our remainder and adding three to it, we're adding one more three to it. So now we get eight, eight, 8 divided by 3 does have a remainder of 3. Does have a remainder of 2. Not 3 rather, 2. Let's put in 8 here, shall we? Let's put in 8 here, see what happens. Let's put in 8. n equals to 8. Now, does 8 does 8 divided by 5 give us a remainder of 1? No. 8 divided by 5 will give us a remainder of 3. 8 divided by 5 will give us a remainder of 3. We're looking for a remainder of 1. That does not do the job. This does not do the job. We need to go one more round. So now we have, now we have 3 plus 3 plus 3 which is 9 plus 2, which is 11, which is 11, and 11 divided by 3 gives us a remainder of 2. So that does the top, top job. That takes care of the top part. We have 11 here. Now, we started out with 2 plus 3, then that didn't do the job, so we added on the 3 to go one more round, then we added one more. So now we have 9 plus 2, which is 11. 11 divided by 3 gives us a remainder of 2. Let's see if 11 does the job here. Eleven. When so now it reads. Listen carefully. Now it reads. When eleven is divided by five. When eleven is divided by five, the remainder is two. Voila! I think we hit a jackpot. We hit a jackpot because when you divide eleven by five, what happens? When we divide eleven right here. When we divide eleven by five. Eleven by five. 
it does give us a, it does give us a remainder of one. So the smallest possible number. The question was, what is the least possible value of n? The least possible value that satisfies the top condition and the bottom condition is, turns out, is 11. 11 is the answer. 11 is the smallest number. Just one more time. 11 is the smallest positive integer, which, when divided by 3, will yield a remainder of 2, as you can see here. And 11, when divided by 5, will yield a remainder of 1. Well, the answer is, the answer is 11. That's it. We are done. Of course, when I go to the back of the camera, I will know how long I have taken for the bloody thing, but it took us a long time, which is quite all right. We are not in a hurry. As I explained to you at the end of every video, we are not here to solve problems. We are here to learn. And if you are bored to death, thinking that I explained too much and this is too simple, then obviously it was, wasn't meant for you. Uh, anyway, I will see you tomorrow. Uh, where we'll do... Oh! Tomorrow, we have a good news. Starting from day number 96, we start solving problems that begin on... Let's turn to page number as I speak. Turn the page slowly. 22, 23, 24... Oh, actually, on 222. We are on page number 220 right now. We are on page number 220. On page number 222 is where we begin the algebra. So starting from tomorrow, we'll learn algebra that we need to learn, that we need to have at our fingertips uh, in order to do well in, in, uh, in uh, GRE. So if you're not very good in algebra and if you would like to brush up on some other kind of basic elementary concept of, of algebra, algebraic concepts, starting from tomorrow is when we'll do it. Okay? I'll see you then. Bye now.